Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, my name is Vanessa, but you can call me Ness. I asked my Instagram followers what they would like to see me film today and I was overwhelmingly asked to do a bookshelf tour. I'm really pleased that the winner was bookshelf tour because I actually think it was a great thing to film now. Since this whole thing started, I've been having trouble sleeping and the only thing that's actually getting me to sleep is by putting on a really long YouTube video and just watching that until I fall asleep. So what I think I want to do today is I'm going to make a really, really long video talking about all the books that I have on my shelves. And I'm hoping that people use it to just put on to fall asleep to, put it on while you're having a meal, put it on while you're in the bath, just to take yourself out of what's going on in the world and into books. Because books are so, so good for promoting wellness and mindfulness. And I truly believe one of the best things that people can be doing right now is reading. So I think I have about 200 books. I haven't actually tried to check. Um, I haven't read a lot of them, if I'm honest, because usually once I read a book, I get rid of it. I take it to a book called Barter Books in Annick in Northumberland in the UK. And I swap them for new books because I read a lot of books and I can't hold on to the ones I've read. I've read like over 400 books. I just can't store them. But I do tend to keep my favourites so I will be talking to you about the plot of my favourite novels as well. Basically I'm going to give you some recommendations. I'm going to talk to you about things that I need to read going forward. A little bit why I've arranged my bookshelves the way that they are. I did intend to arrange them by colour, but at the moment I've sort of got them arranged by genre, but I would like to do a total reorganisation of my bookshelves going forward. So if you are watching this to go to sleep, I hope you sleep well. If you're watching it while you're eating, let me know in the comments what you're eating. I love to talk about food just as much as I like to talk about books. So let's have a look at my bookcases. So these are what my shelves look like. I have books from top to bottom. The bottom tends to be those where it's just really random and I've just like chucked them because I didn't want them at the top. This is mainly what you see when I'm filming this area over here. So they are the books that uh, tend to be on my TBR because they're the ones I'm usually talking about. This shelf over here you don't really see either so that's just a little random place of books. Mainly these are the ones that I'm very interested in or the books that I'm wanting to get around to reading soon. So I'm going to start at the top and work my way around to the left. So this bookcase is the one that is furthest to the door on the right. This shelf mainly is those that are set in space. I really love a good space drama. So the first book is These Broken Stars. I've had this for many, many years. It is a book that I really, really love. I have read it, I just haven't got round to reading the second and third one and I'd love to reread this when I have the time to sit down and read them all. I've never read any of the books by Megan Spooner but I have read the Alumni series by um, Amy Kaufman and I would say that is more generally what she is known for as an author over these broken stars. This book is about Lilac and Tava. They live on a ship called the Icarus. Lilac is the daughter, I believe, of someone that is very rich and high up in their society and Tava is a mechanic. I think that is it. I am literally haven't checked the inside of this book. I'm just going off memory here. So the Icarus, um, there's a fault on it and they need to evacuate the ship and Tava and Lilac get into an escape pod and land on an unknown planet. The planet is terraformed and they're trying to figure out a way off the planet and also trying to find out what the planet is and who lives there. There's a lot of twists and turns that I didn't see in this book. This is a young adult novel but I think adults would really enjoy it as well. I read it when I was about 20 but I'm 27-ish now and I would still read this. It's a great romance, it's definitely unique and it doesn't read like a children's book. I have found that it's quite hard to get in the UK. I had to order this from America, but I did get the second and third books for 25 pence each in a charity shop. I actually had them in paperback and then we bought these in hardback because they were 25 pence. And because hardbacks are really, really expensive in the UK, which is why I just don't have them. But I think they are beautiful covers. Probably some of the nicest book covers I've ever seen. And I just, absolutely love that I have these in hardback. Like I said, I haven't actually read books two and book three. I'm not sure if Lilac and Tava make an appearance in these, but it seems like these are about different characters. If you open it up, 
This is about Jubilee and Flynn. There's no mention of Lilac and Tara at all. And we'll just look in this one. Oh, Jubilee is in this one as well. And so is Tara and Lilac LaRue. So I'm assuming it's a bit like the Illumini Chronicles, also written by Amy Kaufman, where they have different main characters, but the other main characters of other books appear as well. And they come to like the same storyline with the same conclusion. The next books that I have are the Long Earth series. So I believe The Long Earth is the first book. These are written by Terry Pratchett and Stephen Baxter. Terry Pratchett being a very famous English author. Um, and Stephen Baxter is a very famous science fiction author. I bought these because I found them secondhand. I got them like as traded in books. So I got one, two, three and four. And I got them because I imagined the authors. Terry Pratchett being absolutely amazing for fantasy and Stephen Baxter being amazing for science fiction would together create a great series. What I believe that this series is about is characters who experience travel through multiple Earths. The male character is fighting in the First World War and he wakes up one day and suddenly he isn't where he was and the female character is living in modern times and she's an inventor and she invents something that changes the course of human history forever. So I have book one and then I think book two is The Long Mars. I'm not too sure if I'm honest. And then I think it's The Long War. It could just so as easy be the Long Utopia. I believe the only one I haven't got is The Long Cosmos. And I think that would be the final book in the series. I am really looking forward to getting onto reading these because they sound complicated and they sound very interesting. I love a book that is very, has a lot to it and has a lot of depth. And I'm just really excited to read something that these authors created together. So the next book that I have is The Alumni Files, book one. I do have book two and book three, but I have no idea where they are. I think book two might have been left in Australia when I was there. Book three I took to Japan with me, and I'm really worried that Alex has misplaced it on our flight back from Japan, in which case I would be good. Alumni is by Jay Christoph and Amy Kaufman. They are Australian authors, Amy Kaufman being the author as well of these broken stars. Jay Kristoff writes a lot of fantasy as well and his books are absolutely awesome. He's a fantastic young adult author. Alumni was one of the first books that I actually read by him and I thought together they made an awesome series. I love the way that this reads as well. It reads like a series of documents and files, interviews. It's just a really engaging read. Um, the way that it's actually laid out is really really good and it adds to the story so well and helps to build the drama. It has a little bit of a similar um, these Broken Stars vibe to it but I would say this one is more action and less focused on the romance. So our main characters are Ezra and Katie. They both live on a planet that's been inhabited by humans and they are working on I believe it's a mining planet. They aren't very well off, they're just going about, you know, their work when the planet is invaded. By who I can only just say are the bad guys, they're like by an evil corporation and they're trying to take their resources. So they leave on an evacuation ship and as they're going through space, bad things happen on the ship is all I can basically describe it as. The ship is guided by auto intelligence and it's sort of takes on a little mind of its own and there's their ship and another two and they're trying to make it to a safe point so that they can get back up. So the whole story is about their journey through space trying to outrun the bad guys to get to a safe spot but I highly recommend it for boys and girls, children and adults. It's a great, great read. The next book I have is The Martian by Andy Weir and I have this in this beautiful American cover. The British cover is generally the movie cover, which I really didn't like and I just love this American cover. I don't like that it has like this fake sticker on saying that it's gonna be a movie with Matt Damon because I just think it really like takes away from the, the, from the image basically but I think this would make like a beautiful bit of wall art. I just really love space. This might be the only book that I've ever read where I thought the movie was better than the book. It is quite a short read and it is about a character Mark Watney who is part of an exhibition to Mars. The crew while they're on the surface of Mars face great difficulty in a solar storm so they quickly evacuate the planet but they have to leave Mark Watney behind. They do believe that he is dead 
and they return to space to continue their mission home. However, Mark is not dead, he's very much alive. He's a botanist and... Is he a botanist? Is that the right word? He's like a person that knows grown vegetables really well, basically. And this reads as a series of diary entries by Mark Watney where he's documenting him trying to get in contact with the people on Earth to let them know that he's still alive and that he needs rescuing. This book goes over like a couple of months so it is interesting and it's actually like plausible. It reads like it actually could happen in that if you were stuck on Mars this would be the guidebook of how to get yourself back home. It's not far-fetched, it's very realistic and I think it's really intelligent of the author. It would be interesting to know if Andy Weir actually has some qualification in space stuff. God, I'm really showing my intelligence today. Just because he seems to know a lot about the instruments that would be used on a genuine um, trip to Mars, so I just wondered where he would have got that knowledge from. The next book is To Be Taught If Fortunate by Becky Chambers. I have this in a, as a signed edition. It was a gift from my best friend Rebecca and I'm absolutely thrilled to have a Becky Chambers signed copy. Becky Chambers is one of my favourite authors. She also writes The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, which is so, so good as well and I would highly recommend that. To Be Taught If Fortunate is a novella. It is about his crew that are travelling through space. They don't belong to sort of like NASA or um, the European Space Agency because life on Earth isn't what it used to be. Governments can no longer afford to fund space programs, so space programs are genuinely done through um, crowdfunding or private organisations. Their mission is to go to four different planets and gather some information about their life on them planets, how they've been terraformed, could they support life on Earth, and the way they go. To help them get to these planets, they have the ability to climb into these chambers where their bodies are shut down otherwise you know they would die of old age before they reach these planets so they still do age and they have to sort of still groom themselves when they come out of these chambers but they haven't aged as enough to be old people by the time they reach these planets even though it's only like 120 pages there's actually a lot to it it goes into great detail about what planets might be like in the outer solar system and also what kind of problems that space people <laughs> could have once they're out there. It does come down to a great ultimatum for them about should they return to Earth or should they stay on one of these planets that they find which seemingly are like a utopia and there's so many problems on Earth and they also encounter many problems with getting in touch with people at Earth and wondering if they're actually being fed the right information um, in their news updates. So there's actually a lot to this book. The characters are really good, the relationships that they have are really good as well. So I would highly recommend to be taught if fortunate. The next book I have is Moondust. Again, I hate that this is like a full sticker. I bought this on a bit of a whim second hand even though it's in perfect condition. And it is a non-fiction book. It talks a lot about the Apollo program and the author Andrew Smith is interviewing those that have been into space and about how their experience of it was and also what kind of challenges they faced when they eventually came back to Earth and how as a person they were changed. I can imagine that is one of the most surrealist experiences that anyone can ever have, actually leaving the planet and then coming back because everything would just seem really small. You know, the fights in the supermarket over getting the last milk or the arguments about tidying up would just seem so insignificant after you've been through something like that and you've seen the world from a distance. The next books that I have are Proxima and Ultima by Stephen Baxter. They are part of the series. I'm not sure how many books is in the series, if I'm honest. Proxima is the story of humans advance through the universe really. Technology is advanced enough that anyone can be an explorer and anyone can be the first man on the moon, shall we say. So that's what people's new goals are, is to get as, um, as be as adventurous as possible. At least that's what I understand from the synopsis. But 
I think it'd be really interesting to see what Stephen Baxter's take on the rest of the universe looks like because obviously nobody really knows. I mean, me and Roger off the street certainly couldn't have a conversation about what we think the rest of the universe looks like because we just don't know what's out there. So I'm really interested to see what Stephen Baxter's take on the rest of space looks like. I'm not sure if I would read Proxima first or the Long Earth series. I think because I've already read Terry Pratchett and I like his writing style, I'd start with that before trying to do something as complicated as Proxima and Ultima. But I actually think they are absolutely stunning colours. I mean, look at this. It's like a planet on fire. It's just so beautiful. The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet is another book by Becky Lee Chambers. I have this as a second-hand edition. It came with these um, sellotaped edges. I didn't do that. I don't know why anyone would do that, to be honest. I love this book. I rated it five stars when I read it. It is about a crew of people, let's say, but not all of them are humans, on their mission across space. It is so, so inventive, this book. Like, my mind would never ever come up with something as unique as this. When I read it, I was totally blown away that someone could sit down and come up with something so different to the human experience. The main character is Rosemary Harper and she joins the crew of the Wayfarers. The Wayfarers are a ship that takes on odd jobs and they are tasked with building a hypertunnel between planets to cut down the distance and the time taken between these two worlds. But it's also about the struggles that they face along the way when doing this. But, and also a lot of just, you know, living in space and seeing what that's like and how you end up living in space. The creatures are not just from the Earth either. I mean, in this book, there is, cre there is intelligent life from other worlds that work alongside humans in space so it's really interesting i really loved it i do have the second book but that's on my tbr shelf so i don't have them together the next book is sleeping giants i hate that water stones put stickers on books don't even test me like that water stones because i am so mad and i could make an entire video ranting about how they do that but let's just forget that that isn't there and just look at the stunning cover on this this is another book that I haven't read, but the synopsis tells me that it's about a young girl who discovers, when she's young, a ornate metal hand that is obviously too advanced for humans to have made. And it starts the whole question about where did it come from? Is there artificial life somewhere else? Is there intelligent life somewhere else? and she sort of dedicates her life to the study of that. She tries to answer questions like what is it, where did it come from, was she meant to find it, etc. and it causes sort of like a, a global concern. Just a short story, I think this has a sequel, I'd love to let I'd love to know what everyone else thought of it because I'm looking forward to getting out to reading it. The next I have The Absolute Staple in Science Fiction and Fantasy, Tune by Frank Herbert. I don't know how I came across this edition to be honest. It's really old. It's from the 80s. But I actually love that because I love the cover so much. I just think it's so stereotypical of 1980s sci-fi. A lot of people say that this is like the science fiction equivalent of Lord of the Rings. It's like the staple in science fiction, whereas Lord of the Rings was the staple in fantasy. I don't know much about it, if I'm honest, but I can tell you, I am so looking forward to getting around to reading this. It isn't just a singular book. Um, there is multiple in the series, and I have seen them as well in the 80s copies. I just haven't picked them up because I wanted to read the first one first because I wasn't sure if this would have aged well or not. Next I have book one and book two in the Wheel of Time series, the first one being The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. Let me tell you, it is so hard to get books one and two in this series. Every time you go to a second-hand bookstore, you always see like book eight, nine and ten. I mean, I don't know how many books is actually in the series, but I feel like there could be 50 at this rate because I've seen all kinds of numbers for these books. But it's so hard to get book one. These are high fantasy. Like June, they are pretty much from the same time and they are staples in the fantasy genre. I've never got around to reading them because they just seem very scary. They're very thick. And when you open a page, there's words where you're just like, I have no idea what that means. So, as someone that does love fantasy, I have been worried that these are a little bit too much for me, but I'm really looking around to getting to reading them eventually, hopefully 
Now is the right time to get around to reading them when I need to be really taken out of what is happening now. One shelf down, about 20 to go. So this is the shelf directly to the left of it and I would say this is just a mix of young adult. I eventually want to make this just purely for my young adult retellings. I do have A Curse So Dark and Lonely which I'm currently reading which is a fairy tale retelling of Be Beauty and the Beast. So that will eventually go up here as well but at the moment it's just some books I like. So the first book that I have is A Great and Terrible Beauty by Libba Bray. This is the same author that wrote the Diviners series which I also really loved and I got them out of the library and I've been meaning to buy them but I've never seen them secondhand. Um, I just can't afford to buy all the books that I want brand new. I need to take out a bank loan for that. I believe she wrote this before the Diviners and this is also part of the series. I see this a lot in charity shops so I thought I'd pick it up and try it. I've had a look on Goodreads and it seems to be people either really love it or really hate it. It's set in Victorian London and it's about a teenage girl who I think lives in a boarding school and she develops supernatural powers. I'm not too sure how this book is going to go if I'm honest but I'm going to give it a go anyway. I really like the diviners and I thought it was really well written. The library seems like a great author so I'm looking forward to getting around to reading it. The next book is Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I've had this book recommended to me for years and it just took me a while to get around to getting my hands on it. This is a book about a boy named Darrow. He lives on the interior of Mars and he's a miner. They are told that their ultimate aim is to get enough materials to make the exterior of Mars habitable for life. However, he finds out that people have been living on the surface of Mars for generations and it's all been a lie and that the people that live on the surface of Mars see themselves as being better than those that do live in the interior. He realises he is essentially a slave and tries to break the cycle. Rebel of the Sands by Alwyn Hamilton. I have read this book and I really, really liked it. I believe this is a fairy tale retelling. It has very much an Arabian Nights or an Aladdin-esque feel to it. It's about a girl who is caught up in the lands of supernatural abilities. There's genies, there's a rebellion, there's deserts. It's just a great fun read. I really liked it. I have also got Traitor to the Throne, but I haven't got around to reading that yet. And like I'm hoping to get around to reading this. You know like all of the books that I have, I'm just, I like to read them together because I don't always remember what happened in this necessarily. I like to read them back to back. The next four books are part of the Cinder series. Cinder is a fairy tale retelling. In this retelling Cinder is a cyborg and she's living in a futuristic Beijing. Because she is a cyborg she's very much looked down on as a second class citizen and she tries to hide that part of her but her <clears throat> she tries to hide that part of her. Humans have also colonized the moon and they are also seen as sort of like a second class citizen and they're very much at war with the people that still live on Earth. And it's just generally a really fun read. I think men would also like this as well just because of the characters are so so much fun. So you've got Cinder, then you've got Scarlet which oh go overboard. Scarlet, which is a fairy tale retelling of Little Red Riding Hood. Cress, which is a Rapunzel retelling, which is the best Rapunzel retelling that I've ever read. And also Winter, which is a retelling of Snow White and the Evil Queen. Nope. Next I have books 1, 2 and 3 in the Percy Jackson series. These are separate from books 4 and 5 because I've never read books 4 and 5. They are on my TPR shelf. And I've read these. I came to the Percy Jackson series very late. I started reading them in my 20s, but the minute I started reading them, I absolutely fell in love. It was like being a child again and reading Harry Potter for the first time. Percy Jackson is a normal boy until he finds out that he is half god, half human, and he's a demigod. He's sent to Camp Half Blood, which is a school for demigods, and then starts a Greek mythology adventure, that's all I can say. There is absolutely so much to this series, but like Harry Potter where it's all about like friendship with Hermione, Hermione and Ron, this is the same. The cast are absolutely fantastic and you just root for them the whole way. Next I have Shadow and Bone and Siege of Storm. This is book one and this is book two. They are part of the Grisha universe. However, I know the Grisha universe is really, really popular. There is so many books set in it now. 
but I didn't like Shadow and Bone. I really wanted to, but I didn't. I was really home to love a world that took its inspiration from Russia, but I just didn't like it. I didn't like the characters and I thought it was quite boring. I'm not sure if just because when I read it I was 21 and I might have been like too old, I guess, to enjoy something like this. But I really didn't like it. I don't know why I've still got them, if I'm honest. I will probably not get around to reading Stage and Storm. Stage, <laughs> Siege and Storm. But I just can't part with them because I really, really want to like them. But I just need to accept that. I don't. Next, I have The Assassin's Curse and The Pirate's Wish by Cassandra Rose Clark. The Assassin's Curse is one of the books that Booktube made me buy straight away. I'm genuinely not that influenced by booktube when it comes to buying although I do take recommendations from there but I really thought that the assassin's curse was going to be so much better than what it was and it just really wasn't I don't know if it had just been so hyped up by people that when I got around to reading it didn't live up to my expectations however it is one of the most beautiful covers that I've ever seen there's pirates there's assassins there's wizards magic it's just a little bit too bizarre for me I think even though I, I do like that but maybe it was just the way it was written I don't know I don't know why I've still kept a hold of these two I haven't read that one because I didn't enjoy this one it's sort of the same scenario where I just need to accept that I don't like them and get rid of them even though I'm so disappointed that I don't it, if I had to pick one book off my shelf which I said was my favorite it would be Eve of Man by the Fletchers. Book two comes out in a few weeks I'm definitely going to reread this in the next couple of weeks because I absolutely loved it Eve is the last girl to have been born of a generation and she's put in a tower for her safety. She's looked after by elderly women. The world has gone to pot really. She falls in love and together they plot her escape from this tower which she slowly starts to see as a prison, not necessarily a shelter. It is so well written and I would highly recommend this for fans of Scythe. Scythe? Scythe? Ugh can't speak today. As I read them back to back and thought that there was a lot of similarity in how they were written and I really enjoyed it. Children of Virtue and Vengeance is book two in the Children of Blood and Bone series. I got rid of book one after I read it and I really regret doing that because I'd love to reread that alongside this. I never actually intended to pick up book two. I did like Children of Blood and Bone but I thought it was quite long. It was definitely a fun read but the, I thought there was just so many more books that I would rather read over this one so I never expected to get it but I found it like the week that it came out second hand so obviously I had to buy it but now that I have this in hardback I think I'm going to get the first one in hardback as well so I can keep them together and the last book on the shelf is the absolute mammoth that is the Priory of the Orange Tree that sits at over 500 pages this is a standalone high fantasy book um, I believe it's in the YA genre but I would say it's probably more like new adult. Priory of the Orange Tree is it's like a Game of Thrones sized world. There's so many storylines going on. There's dragons, um, there's magic. It's genuinely so good and I would highly recommend this to everyone. I've never spoke to someone that hasn't enjoyed it. Yes the slow parts because of the world building but I think as far as like writing goes and making a plot. It's one of the best books that I have actually ever read. I will literally be keeping that forever. And then the last shelf at the top is the one that's on the left that's on the curve. I have The Hate You Give. I picked this up for 50 pence in a charity shop but I know it's very very popular. It's about the black civil rights movement in America and I'm surprised that this is the only book I have of that topic on my shelves because it's such an important topic in our society. But I'm looking forward to getting out and reading that. Then I have the Free Dark Crown series. I absolutely love this series. I've read books two and three, but not the fourth one, which is the final one. I'd highly recommend this to everyone. Um, anyone who hasn't had this, I've been buying them a copy. It's about three sisters who are all princesses. Their mum was the queen, but she died during childbirth, which is traditional for their world. All three sisters have different powers, and when they turn 16, they have to fight to the death. To become the new queen and only one of them will survive. So I have book one, One Dark Throne. I don't think they wrote them in like, you know, any order that makes sense. And then and then two dark reigns. Like it should have been like one dark throne, two dark reigns, three dark crowns, but you know. And then the fourth book being five dark fades. Then I have the knife of 
Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness. I love Patrick Ness as an author. I don't know anything about this series, but everything that I've read by Patrick Ness so far has been part of my absolute books of all time. Um, I have book two, The Ask and the Answer, and I also have book three as well, which is Monsters of Men. So I'm looking forward to getting around to reading these. Um, I love Patrick Ness. I have total faith that anything that he writes is good. He's sort of like one of my autobi authors. Then I have Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. This was the book, first book that I read by her, but I have read some other stuff since and enjoyed it. Station Eleven was a book that was very popular on Goodre Goodreads and on Booktube. It tells the story of a group of travelling actors living through a pandemic. So I don't want to speak too much about it at the moment, but the whole book was like a free star read for me, but there was a singular chapter in here where it's about people that are stuck in an airport. They're waiting in the departure lounge for their flight and the world sort of shuts down while they're in there and they can't leave and there's no flights and all the planes are grounded. And it just felt like so surreal. It was one of the best chapters of books that I've ever read and that's why I've kept this. Just because I might want to read that individual chapter again, which sounds totally crazy, I know. But the less we say about that at the moment, the better. I also picked the Hazelwood up in a second-hand shop. I love sprayed edges. So I actually picked it up just because of the sprayed edges. I'd never seen the Hazelwood in this cover before. I think American Mass paperback looks different to this one. The blurb reads a little bit like it's a fairy tale retelling, and I'm not sure if it is or not, but it's about a girl that um, mother goes missing and her grandparent dies. It sort of links to this wood where she's been told loads of fairy tales about it, so I imagine she has to go and explore what's in the wood. Next I have the Lord of the Rings books, but I don't really need to say much about them, but I do have a bind up from the 80s. It's just a shame that, you know, it's been sat in the sun so long that this has sort of disappeared, but I kind of like that I have them all in one book. I was thinking about getting rid of these ones and just keeping these, but I wouldn't want to like take this one outside to read because it's so fragile. So I've kept these basically just for if I want to read them when I'm out and about. I also have The Hobbit in this cover, which I absolutely love. I have the first book in the Witcher series, The Last Wish. I bought this because I've played the Witcher games. I love The Witcher 3. I didn't enjoy the Netflix series at all. I thought it was pretty rubbish if I'm honest. But I do love the games, so that's why I wanted to read the books. And another recent edition is The Lives of Loch Lamora. I did buy this on the back of the suggestion of Regan from Peru's Project. I think she reads good, interesting novels, so I bought this on that. I do know that this is part of a series. Um, it's quite an old book, so I'm looking forward to getting on to reading this one soon too. So next I have the two shelves down. And I see them all as basically one shelf, and this is my TBR section. So let's have a look at this. So first off, I have Throne of Swans. I don't know anything about this. I just bought this because it was on offer in Tesco's. Um, and I wanted another book anyway, and it was buy one, get one half price. So I've picked this one up. It's a young adult high fantasy book, so we'll see. Lifelike by Jay Kristoff. Uh, this is another trilogy. I absolutely love Jay Kristoff's books. I don't know much about this one, but like Patrick Ness, I just have faith that I will enjoy it. Um, I also don't have the Nevernight Chronicles, I've realised, because I've been holding out on trying to get them in the American editions, because the UK editions are absolutely pants compared to the US covers. So if anyone in the UK knows how I could get a hold of US covers in the UK, please let me know. The Warrior Air by Cinder Williams Chimer. I've never read any of this author's books. Um, I got this because I saw it in a second-hand shop and I recognised it because some booktubers have been talking about it. I know that there is another series by this author that's really popular, but they're so hard to get in the UK. You just never really see them, so I'm looking forward to getting around to reading something by this author. Next, I have The Way of Kings, which is the Stormlight Archive. This is an absolute bible of a book. Um, it's by Brandon Sanderson, which again is an author that is well-established. He writes good books. Um, I also have book two here, which is in two parts, because, you know, they're huge. I think there's more books to this, but I just haven't got around to picking them up yet, because I have so much reading to do anyway. If anyone has actually got around to reading The Way of Kings in Full, please let me know what you think of it. I know people really love it, and this is a book that is a goal for me to read. Like, I feel like I'll have achieved something when I actually finish this book. I've had it for absolutely years. I think I've had it for about six years. American Gods by Neil Gaiman. 
Again, a very well established author. I don't think I've ever read anything by Neil Gaiman. I picked this up before the Amazon series came out and I think I might just read the Amazon series and then get rid of this book because I don't know if I'm ever going to get around to reading it but I'd like to think that I would. The Girl in the Tower by Catherine Arden, again fake sticker, like that doesn't come off, that is part of the cover. I absolutely love the idea of this book but I know that this is the second one and I haven't got around to picking up The Bear and the Nightingale which is the first one but I've heard that this book is absolutely amazing. The minute that this quarantine ends I'm probably going to go out and buy The Bear and the Nightingale. I think this might be the book set in medieval Russia that gives me what I need from a novel in regards to a Russian setting. Next I have books two and three in the Scythe series. I believe Thunderhead is book two. I really enjoyed the first one. I love the idea of the way that death is portrayed in this, how we're at a stage in humanity where nobody can die unless they are chosen to be killed um, by sort of these Grim Reaper styles and how, you know, the idea that two apprentices are pitted against each other. I just think it's so unique. It was a very fun read. It was the first book that I'd read by Neil Schusterman and I would 100% read more of his because it was genuinely, it sort of read a little bit like Terry Pratchett where there's an underlying element of humour in it, which I really like. Children of Time by Adrian Tsiolkovsky. Again, this is a book set in futuristic space. Life on Earth is dying as we know it and they need to find a new utopia. So humans go off to try and find this new Eden. The last by Hannah Jameson, which the cover totally gives me the Grand Budapest Hotel vibes and I don't know why, but I absolutely love that film. So I get good vibes by this book. The last is a post-apocalyptic book set in a hotel. You are part of 20 survivors in this hotel and one of the survivors ends up being murdered and you have to figure out who done it. <laughs> it sounds really fun. So I'm hoping to read it. And it has a recommendation by Emily St. John Mandel, who's the author of Station Eleven, who wrote a good post-apocalyptic book. So I'm hoping that's good. The Born Season by Samantha Shannon. I didn't actually have any intention of picking this up. I believe that it is a fantasy thriller, which sounds like a genre that I need. I've known about this book for many years, but I only decided to pick it up after reading The Prior of the Orange Tree and realising how much of a fantastic author Samantha Shannon actually is. So I know this is intended to be a very long series. I think there's about seven or eight books that are commissioned. Um, the Mime Order is the second one and I'm just looking forward to getting around to reading this. I haven't read too many fantasy thrillers. I think A Darker Shade of Magic would count in that genre and I didn't enjoy it. So hopefully this one is good. The Queens of Innerslea by Tessa Grattan. I actually bought this book by accident because I thought that this book was something completely different and it wasn't the book I was actually after but it still sounds quite good. I was sent this as an arc um, before the book actually published but never got around to reading it so I'm pleased that I was able to actually purchase the physical copy to support the fact that the publisher sent me an arc. I don't know anything about this. I think it's a, a bit of a mixed reaction on Goodreads about how, what people thought of this so I'm going into this with no expectation when I do read it. Okay so it's took me like until I've made this to realise that Wayfarer isn't the book that I thought it was. I've realised this is the sequel to Passenger and I thought that I was buying Passenger when I bought this but oh well. Um, I guess I don't want to read the back to read the synopsis to see what it's about because I'll probably get spoiled but this is part of a very popular series that done the rounds on booktube a few years ago so yeah apparently I need to buy Passenger now. Then I have books four and five in the Percy Jackson series. Book one in the Expanse series, Leviathan Wakes. I believe there's many books in the series as well. Can someone let me know whether The Expanse on Amazon Prime on Netflix is actually based on these books? Because I really wanted to watch it and then thought, hang on, if I watch that I might get spoiled for this. And I really want to read it, not watch it. It's a space opera where humans have colonised the rest of the solar system and, you know, all the drama kicks off from there. But it does have a recommendation from George R.R. Martin. So I'm interested to get around to reading it. It just took me forever to buy it because I could just never find it and I had no money to go to Waterstones and purchase it outright. Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. Um, again, a book that's very popular on booktube. I believe the setting is also taken from medieval Russia and if it is, like, this is what I need. Like, if people could leave me some recommendations for books set in, like, Russia or taking a Russian influence, please let me know because I would need to read more of them. I think this might also be a fairy tale retelling. I'm not too sure. I haven't read it, obviously. Empress of All Seasons. I don't remember buying this. I don't know how I've come 
to have this in my possession. I obviously bought it at Waterstones because it has a Waterstones receipt inside. But I don't remember buying this at all. A Coulson Common Orbit, which is book two to The Long Way to the Small Angry Planet, which we've already discussed. The Rig by Roger Levy. This is an absolutely beautiful cover. I love the colours on this book. It's an adult science fiction novel. I haven't read too many adult science fictions. I usually read YA. <clears throat> I don't know a lot about this, but I'm looking forward to getting around to reading it. The Neo Witch by V.E. Schwab. I had no idea that this book existed. I think it's new. I just bought it because the book that I really wanted, which was the book that I'm going to be talking about next, was um, on offer and I needed to pick another one up and I was under a lot of pressure at the tail. So I just picked this up on the recommendation that it is V.E. Schwab and they're an established author. The back of it sounds a little bit fairy tale esque so someone let me know some more information about this without it being spoiled. I've been trying to get my hands on this book for so so long. One of my friends who's really into reading fantasy and science fiction as well said a couple of years ago you have to read The Rage of Dragons. I'd never heard of it, I'd never heard of the author, I think this might be his debut novel and I could just never find it in bookstores. I think it's only recently been republished in paperback and been put in bookstores so I'm really excited to get around to reading this because I love books with dragons in. If anyone's read this please let me know what your thoughts on it were but I'm absolutely thrilled that I've been able to add this to my collection recently and it's definitely high up on my TBR list. Skyward by Brandon Sanderson which is a bit different from what Brandon Sanderson would usually write. It's a bit more on the sci-fi than a fantasy but I'm looking forward to seeing what his take on sci-fi is. Too Like Lightning by Ada Palmer. This is part of the Terry Ignata series. There's a lot of books in this series. They're very thick. I don't know too much about them but I know a lot of people are really caught up with this series and I am not. So I'm looking forward to getting around to reading it. When I purchased this I bought it just because the back sounds really really complicated and I love complicated books but it's essentially it says here a narrative events of the year 2454 so it's a futuristic sci-fi fantasy. I think at the time I'd been playing a lot of Destiny 2 and the thought of this just sounded really good. The Popular is part of the high fantasy series it's book one which takes inspiration from Asian history so I'm really looking forward to getting around to reading this as well. I think the book art is really, really good as well. I love that. There's an archer in there. It really makes me think of D&D for some reason. The Rhythmatist by Brandon Sanderson. This is also a book I've had for years, but I absolutely love it because it's signed for me by Brandon Sanderson. Thank you very much, Rebecca, for getting this for one of my birthdays. I'm really looking forward to getting around to reading it. I just have so many books to read. It sounds a little bit Harry Potter-esque where there is a boy who can do magic but do magic badly and he is at a school for wizards and witches and things go wrong. Sounds a little bit like Harry Potter to me, so I'm excited. A Torch Against the Night is book two in An Ember in Ashes. I loved An Ember in Ashes so much I would actually reread that now if I had the time. It's a romance novel set in a fantasy world. It's so much fun. It's a little bit Romeo and Juliet-esque but I absolutely love it. I would highly recommend it for fans of the young adult genre. The Free by Sarah Lotz. I've had this book for so many years and I've heard really good things about it. I picked it up on so many people's recommendations. I just haven't got around to reading it. I believe it's a young adult thriller. Um, three passenger planes around the world um, crash at the same time and the only people to survive are a child from each of them and one of them makes a voicemail that gives a warning to the rest of the world and things go to pot basically. So Sounds interesting. I'm really looking forward to getting on to reading this one as well. It's on my TBR. Cirque by Madeline Miller. Again, don't know too much about this because I love to go into books blind, but I believe it takes inspiration from ancient Greek mythology. Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo. I tried to get into this to see if I like some other books from the Grisha trilogy, but I've tried to read the first couple of chapters and I just can't get into it, but I'm hoping to stick with this one. I'm hoping I like this one more than Shadow and Bone. And The Shadow of What Was Lost by James Islington. Apparently this is sort of like a modern take on The Wheel of Time. Um, it's highly recommended for fans of The Wheel of Time. I believe it's adult um, high fantasy. I think I might read this one before a lot of the fantasies on my shelves because it is really long, but I've heard really good things about it. And I'm hoping it's a bit easier to read than the rest of them. So the so that's my TBR shelves done. The shelf to the left is purely for three things only. They are Harry Potter books, 
extra books in the Percy Jackson world which are different series. These are the Heroes of Limits and I've started collecting the Trials of Apollo as well because I want to read all of these after reading the Percy Jackson. And also I have Theft of Swords by Michael J. Sullivan. This was highly recommended as a fantasy on booktube a while ago. When I say a while ago I mean about six years ago. And I found these all second hand and I got them all for like a pound. It's a fantasy world where the main character is a skilled thief and his partner is a mercenary. They become wrapped up as scapegoats in a plot to kill the king. Sounds like a great adventure. I'm just not sure when I'll get around to reading them. Okay, we finally made it to the middle shelves and these are like where things start to go wrong in my organisation. Um, yeah, these are totally mixed master books. This is why I want to rearrange them because from here on there's not really any logical way of my books being organised. I have The Kite Runner by Khaled Husseini and I also have A Thousand Splendid Sons. I believe these are both set in Afghanistan and I would just love to read something of that setting and that's why I purchased them but I am really scared that they're going to be sad and make me cry and I don't like books that make me cry because I want books to cheer me up now, not do that so don't know when I'll get around to reading these but I just love to read books of an international setting. I have The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. I picked this up second hand as well. I don't know much about this but I know that it was very very popular at one point and I also picked up her second novel which isn't part of the series which is Melonmoth but I love that as an author they have like matching covers like if I was an author I would totally do this as well. The Luminaries which is an epic novel which I've also had for about eight years. I have no intention of reading it this year at all. I don't know if I'll ever get around to reading it, but I'd like to think that one day I would. Shantaram, another epic novel, probably one I'm more likely to get around to reading because it's set in India and I love international settings. I also didn't realise this had a sequel, but I found this recently in a charity shop for 25 pence. I thought Shantaram was a standalone, but anyway. There's a sequel apparently. The Girls by Emma Klein. I had some book credit at a second hand bookstore that I needed to spend and pick this up because I really liked the cover. I know that's terrible. I'm so bad at purchasing art purely on covers. But I think like I recognised it and if I recognise a book it means I've probably seen someone talking about it on booktube at some point and I'm more likely to buy books that I recognise than random ones off the shelf. Alone in Berlin. It's a Nazi book. I don't particularly want to cry at the moment, so that is a hard no for now. The Revenant, I bought this before I actually saw the movie, but then I watched the movie and I was absolutely blown away. Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hardy are absolutely fantastic in it, and I've watched that movie about ten times. So I'm probably never going to get around to reading the book because I can't imagine the book ever living up to the performance of Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hardy. If you haven't seen it, please watch it. The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. I've tried to read this so many times but I kind of get into it. It is quite a short story, I would say it's more of a novella if anything, but I just kind of get into it at all and I really want to because it's won so many awards. And Ember and Ashes, we've already spoke about this because book two is on my TBR. All I like we cannot see, another Nazi book you know we're not doing that right now. The Virgin Suicides which is one of my favourite books of all time and I have no idea why because the plot is really depressing but I've read this so many times I can't part with it at all. I absolutely love this book. It's just so hypnotic but probably not the best to read right now. And it's sort of the same for Lolita. This is a book I've read multiple times. It's one of my favourite books of all time but I hate the plot. I hate the characters. I hate it so much but it's so hypnotising and it's so wrong that Every time I read it, I enjoy it. The Monster Calls by Patrick Ness, which was the first book that I ever read by Patrick, West, Patrick Ness. I don't know why I've actually kept this at all because I've read it and I really, really loved it. It was one of the best books I've ever read, but it made me cry so much that I can never, ever read it again. It's about a boy who's trying to come to terms with his mum who is dying of cancer and it is so sad, but it's absolutely fantastic and I'm purely keeping it just because... I want to lend it out to other people who haven't read it. Start of a 10 by David Nichols. I've read two of David Nichols books already. I've read Us and One Day. I really enjoyed them both but I also bought this one because the male character in it loves Kate Bush and my fiance also loves Kate Bush and I don't know it just seems a little bit like relatable I guess. I haven't read it but I'm hoping to get around to reading it soon. This is just a hard no for now. Then I have book one and book two in Heartstopper. They are LGBT graphic novels and I do have them signed by the author. I didn't 
I actually went to the shops just with the intention of buying this. I didn't know they would be signed. So I was so over the moon when I realised that these were signed. And I'm going to read these soon because I think it'll be something light and easy to take my mind off what's going on. This is also a very YA heavy shelf. I have the Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. This is just here out of convenience. I absolutely love this. This is like an adult fantasy crime book. Um, it's sort of a little bit like Agatha Christie, so fans of Agatha Christie, I'd highly recommend this. It seems a little bit like Mama, you either love it or you hate it. I loved it, my auntie loved it, but my best friend absolutely hated it. You basically have to solve the murder of someone at this party. The main character wakes up in the bodies of all the people that would have been the key witnesses, and he has to figure out who done it. He's still himself, and he takes on the personality and the memories of the witnesses. So it has like a little bit of like a supernatural element, but it's really good. One of Us is Lying. I've actually read this, but I didn't really like it because I'd already guessed the ending by the time I started. I wish it had a different ending, but I really enjoyed the characters and I really enjoyed the plot, and I would recommend this for fans of YA. Five characters go into detention, but only four come out. One of them ends up being killed, and the other four students are, are the prime suspects in their murder, but all four of them have their own different personal struggles. They make unlikely friends, which the whole friendship element I really enjoyed. I just really hated the outcome of it. Daisy Jones and the Six, absolutely loved this. It was a little bit slow, it did put me in a reading slump, but I'm a massive fan of Fleetwood Mac and it really gave me Fleetwood Mac vibes. I highly recommend this for fans of 1980s music or 70s music and the lifestyle surrounding that. Love Letters to the Dead, I actually picked up second hand recently, but it's brand new. It's about a girl who's struggling to come to terms with the death of her sister and starts writing to celebrities that also died very young to try and cope. Fans of The Impossible Life, another YA contemporary which I bought second hand but is in perfect condition. Umami which in my whole video someone commented saying it reminded them of Yunagi as in like the thing out of friends and I just can't take this book seriously anymore. It is a contemporary YA set in Mexico though so I'm looking forward to reading something in an international setting. Things a bright girl can do, I've never read it but I know it's about women's rights movements in the early 20th century. It is a YA and I'm looking forward to seeing their take on it. Opposite of Always which is another contemporary YA which I picked up second hand but is in brand new condition and got it for like a couple of pounds. The Girl with All the Gifts which is another book that I haven't read but I've had for about eight years now. I will get around to reading it someday, but I think there's an element of like a pandemic or apocalyptic in it, so that's a hard no for now. The Invasion of the Tailing and the Fate of the Tailing, which I know are books two and three in a series, or you know, three and four, I don't know. And I don't have the first one, but every time I've bought this, I've been thinking that I've been buying the first one, and I've just like totally not been aware of what I've been doing. But I did pick them up second hand. I'm just waiting to find the first one so I can read this series, which is a fantasy young adult series. Enchante, which is a young adult fantasy set during the French Revolution. Manhattan Beach, which I bought with second hand book credit, which I needed to use up. I believe this is an adult contemporary about young girls working during World War II in America. Confessed by Colleen Hoover, who is a very established new adult author. This is the only Colleen Hoover book that I have read, but I did enjoy it. I would love to read more new adult books. I don't read a lot of romance, but I liked sort of reading a romance that wasn't so adult and was a bit more set in people's 20s. But if you're in your 20s and looking for a contemporary romance read, definitely look at Colleen Hoover. I believe she's made some of her books free on Kindle during this outbreak, so if you're looking for something to read, have a look on Amazon Kindle. Never Fade, which I think is book two in the Darkest Mind series. I don't actually have the first one, but I found this second hand for a pound, so I've bought it in anticipation of buying The Darkest Minds. And Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe. This is a LGBT young adult contemporary novel. This was such an easy read and it was really heartwarming, so I would highly recommend it during this time if someone's looking for an easy romance read. Or something about friendships. Next, I just have my graphic novel collection. Um, just really consists of paper girls, fables, and saga. I will absolutely recommend saga to everyone. It's really crude, so maybe not to like under 16 year olds, but saga and fables, absolutely fantastic, amazing. I've read about 20 of fables and I've read all of saga. The ending, oh my god, 
can we talk about it in the comments but spoiler free so we don't spoil it for anyone else but if you've never read these please please go to your library when you're able to and read them and this is the last middle shelf so i have my game of thrones books here i've read them all apart from the last one but i'm just a little bit put off because of the tv series the Passage and The Twelve. I've read The Passage but I didn't really like it but I read it as a teenager. I think now that I'm a bit older I might reread it and see if I can give it another go. It's a fantasy novel. It's a little bit like a pandemic-ish storyline and there's a big time jump into the future. Probably not the best thing to read at the moment so we're just gonna move right along. Born in a Burial Ground and Body Breaker, which is a series by M.W. Craven, who's my favourite crime writer of all time. If you haven't read anything by him, I highly recommend you get in The Puppet Show because it's so, so good. It's the best crime series I've ever read and it's much better than J.K. Rowland's Cormoran Strike series. Every family member who hasn't read them but enjoyed that series, when I've bought it for them and they've read it, they've agreed much better than Cormoran Strike. I just absolutely love the characters in it. This was his first series which has different characters in which I'm looking forward to getting around to reading too during this time as well. Children of Room which was book two in the Children of Time series which I had discussed in my TBR shelf. By the same author though is The Tiger and the Wolf which is a series which is a high fantasy series. It's set in a world where, where people live in clans and your animal clan is sort of like a spirit that you take on and the main character is of the Tiger and the Wolf clan and she's torn between her allegiance. Another Stephen Baxter book. I truly didn't realise how many Stephen Baxter books I actually had. The Voyage is the fictional story of humans' first manned mission to Mars. Probably not one I'm going to get around to reading for a long time because, you know, <laughs> it's a bit low on the list. And The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss, although I also bought this on Audible. I'm probably more likely to listen to the Audible version than read this at the moment. And then these books here, which I have never heard of, but I got them for 10 pence each, second hand, in their adult fantasy. And with them being fantasy, I just, I thought I'd try them. Why not? But honestly, I know nothing about them. But, you know, 10 pence. Moving down again to the second to last shelf. This is just Evie from the Pokemon store in Tokyo. I have a non-fiction book, A Brief History of Japan. I have read it. It goes into a lot of in detail about Japanese mythology. And it was just an area that I absolutely knew nothing about. And it goes into sort of like Samurai and Shogun. And it was just really interesting. So if you're looking for, if you're looking to educate yourself on Japanese history and mythology, I'd highly recommend. Battle Royale, I picked this up second hand but I've never actually read it but I've seen the movie about 10 million times. But I'm really interested to see how the level of violence actually compares in the book and the movie so we'll see how that goes. 6-4 which is a Japanese crime novel and Japanese crime novels have a tendency of being quite gory and quite quite out there really so Probably not a book for right now, but I'm interested in reading a little bit more by Japanese authors. The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater. I really, really want to try and get into this, but I've read the first couple of chapters and I just can't get into it. But I'm hoping to stick with it and maybe when I'm in a bit of... When I have a bit more time to actually sit and try and get into a book, I just couldn't get into it and I felt like I was reading the same stuff over and over again and just not taking it in. Maybe I just need to be in a better headspace to enjoy it. Forces of Nature by Brian Cox. This is a non-fiction book. And it attempts to answer some questions about life on Earth. I bought this purely because I wanted to support Brian Cox because I think he is hilarious. I watch all of his documentaries. He puts me to sleep most of the time, if I'm honest. But I think the way that he speaks, when he just speaks like this, it's just so funny. And he talks about things that just make no sense. And like when he's like, you know, he uses the most trivial things like bottles of vinegar to explain big complicated concepts. I don't know. I just really like Brian Cox. I think the guy is cool. Vox, which is an adult fantasy, I would guess it would be called. I'm going to keep on to this book until I can go to Bart Books and swap it for something else because I won't be keeping it. I have read it and I just didn't really enjoy it that much. It's a book where American women aren't allowed to speak more than 100 words a day. They wear a counter and if they do, they start getting shocked and the more that they break the rules, they'll eventually die of shock until the president gets asphasia and he's declining very rapidly and the main character who is a female is tasked with being able to come up with a cure for the president and in return she's given her freedom for this time 
but it's not necessarily more about that it's more about like her relationships and stuff which I just don't agree with I don't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't read it but it's like marital problems and stuff I just didn't like it if I'm honest Wool, which was another recent 25 pence purchase. I swear to God, charity shops are your friends, readers. They are absolutely your friends. It says the next Hunger Games, but I think this is an adult post-apocalyptic fantasy, which, you know, we're going to just move right along from. Not right now. Sorry. Books two and three in the Half Bad series. I read Half Bad in January and I really enjoyed it. It was like if Harry Potter had gone bad. The concept is that there is black witches and white witches. Black witches are inherently bad evil witches and white witches are good and they do they use their magic to fall good. They are separated as a society but there's not many black witches anymore and the main character has a parent who is a white witch and a parent who is a black witch and he struggles to come to terms with who he is as a person, where his morals lie and what his personality is. But he's also becoming a threat to wizard in which society and they're trying to take steps to segregate him from everyone else. It was a fun read, I really liked it. Another 25 pence purchase which is a brand new copy of Winter in Madrid by CJ Sansom. I read Dominion by his recently but I didn't really like it but I've heard that this one is a lot better but it is set during World War II just after the Spanish Civil War and it's just not something that I want to get around to reading very soon so this will probably be on my shelf gathering dust for a long time. I bought this in the same store for 25 pence. Um, this book is very very popular. I think most people have heard of it. I don't really know anything about it. I had never had any intention of purchasing it until I saw it for 25 pence and thought you know I'm buying all these books anyway I may as well get this one as well. It's about a woman who just lives a very ordinary and basic life. It does give me a little bit of stoner vibes. Um, stoner being like the modern classic. I read that recently which was about a, which was about a man who just lives the most ordinary repetitive life but I really enjoyed it so this gives me a little bit of that vibe so I'm holding out some hope on it although it does say funny and I'm looking for more books that are funny. Another 25 pence purchase recently is a cost of a Court of Mist and Fury. I'm currently doing a giveaway if you want a chance to win a signed copy of the first book of this which signed by Sarah J Mass herself if you just look at a few videos back but it's brand new so I just thought I'd get it. I really really didn't like the first one but for 25 pence I'd like to read a little bit more of Sarah J Mass to see if the series gets better. I believe A Court of Thorns and Roses is a fairy tale retelling of Beauty and the Beast but I thought A Curse So Dark and Lonely which I'm currently reading has been doing it a lot better if I'm honest. But I do have a tendency to like Sarah J Mass's books so we'll see. Strange the Dreamer by Lani Taylor. I have read A Daughter of Smoke and Bone and really enjoyed it. I picked this one up in a second-hand shop and I'd never heard of it actually but because I like the author and I know that she writes really well I thought I would pick this one up and give it a go. Mirage, another recent charity shop find. I got this for £2.50 which is an absolute bargain for a hardback book which is brand new. This is a brand new American copy so I have no idea how a brand new American book ended up in a charity shop in the northeast of England but I'm not complaining. It is a young adult fantasy novel, again giving me some Rebel of the Sands vibes by the sound of it and also a little bit of Children and Blood and Bone as well. So I enjoyed them so I'm hoping that I'll enjoy this one as well. Next are some books that were also 25 pence, Honour Among Thieves, which is book one in a series by Rachel Kane and Anne Aguirre. I was a huge fan of Rachel Kane when I was like 14 when I read her books, oh my god what were they called, the Morganville Vampire series? Oh my god I loved them so much. I think if I tried to go back and read them as an adult I would really cringe at myself but when I was a teenager it was like the humour and the oddness that I needed to get me through my school days. They were genuinely fun. I really enjoyed them. And this was a book that I also got in a charity shop for 25 pence but this is part of a series and I don't intend to buy the first one so I'm probably just going to use this as trading for books at barter books. This is purely my Stephen King shelf but I do have some vintage classics at the end. I have For Whom the Bell's Torn by Ernest Hemingway, I have Catch 22 and I have Little Dorrit by Charles Dickens as well. I do love Stephen King as an author. I have the Batchman books but I haven't actually read any of them but Stephen King did have a pseudonym where he wrote books under the name Richard Batchman. This is a bind up of Rage, The Running Man, The Long Walk and Roadwork. I'm not sure why he wrote under a pseudonym. I think it was just because they didn't fit in with his horror genre so he wrote under a different name. 
but I really really want I bought this purely to read the long walk because it sounds really good and also the running man which have been turned into movies I think they've got Arnold Schwarzenegger in but I've had this for years and it's really and it really is a book that I've highly anticipated reading but never got around to reading Salem's Lot which I've never read the Stand, which is one of the first books I read that was over a thousand pages. I can't believe I actually sat and read this in three days and mustn't have slept. This is a truly epic novel. There is so much that goes into this. If this was a TV series, this would be like a hundred hours long. It is post-apocalyptic. It is about a plague that sweeps across the nation and the country just... and the world just falls apart. Maybe not the right time at the moment, but if someone is looking for a book where you just absolutely get sucked right into the world, I'd highly recommend The Stand. Sleeping Beauties, which I haven't read, but I think the American cover is absolutely stunning. This is the British mass market paperback cover. The Bizarre of Bad Dreams, which I think is a bind-up of short stories. The Outsider, which is of the crime genre. The Shining, I've never read it, but I've also not watched the movie, so when I do come around to reading it, it'll be a surprise. Mr Mercedes, which is book one in a crime series, and I also have book two, which is Finders Keepers. Doctor Sleep, which is the sequel to The Shining. The Revival, which I believe is a short standalone. And The Institute, which is a newer Stephen King novel, but if you've read Firestarter, it gives me a lot of Firestarter vibes. I did enjoy Firestarter, and I also really enjoyed, oh, I forgot the name, it's like 11... 110952. Oh, I don't know. It's like it's like a date and it's the date that JFK died. I highly, highly recommend it. one of the best books that I've ever read. I actually might repurchase that just so I can read it again. It's where a man has the ability to go back in time and he's tasked with stopping the assassination of John F. Kennedy. But every time he does that, the current world changes in bad ways. So he's trying to do it in a way that doesn't cause so much problems for 2009 or wherever it was that he was living in but it was very very interesting and this is essentially just a shelf where I keep a lot of my classics I'm not going to go into detail I'm just going to show you which ones that I have I also just have an odd copy of Wilbur Smith the seventh scroll which is book two in an ancient Egyptian series but I did read book one and I really enjoyed it so I'm just going to read book two and then discard it because it is very old it's my grandma's and I'm pretty sure it was her mams as well. So I have Mansfield Park by Jane Austen, Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen, Brave New World by Aldous Huxley, but I love this cover. This is actually Lady Chatham's lover, but it was my great grandma's copy and it was a bit too risque to be reading in public so she put a cover over the front of it so no one knew what she was reading. Animal Farm by George Orwell, 1984 by George Orwell, East of Eden by John Steinbeck, Far From the Maddening Crowd by Thomas Hardy, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte which is the only classic I've actually read of any of the classics on the shelf and I loved it, it's one of my favourite books of all time. Tess of the D'Urbervilles by Thomas Hardy, The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, The House of the Dead, I'm not going to try and pronounce the author's name, Bleak House by Charles Dixon, this is so heavy, oh my god my arm, The Shape of Things to Come by H.G. Wells, the War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. I never realised until I bought this how small of a book this was. Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. If I'm going to read any classic next, it would be this one. Dracula by Bram Stoker. This was the first Penguin classic book I had, which sort of started my love for them. The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Casino Royale by Ian Fleming. This was the first James Bond book that I actually read. But I super enjoyed it. I really, really did. And I loved it in a different way to what I love the movies. I do enjoy the movies. Um, I really like all of the modern James Bond films. But this was just so different because it really read like it's time as well. I think it's aged really well. Apart from the general way that women are spoken about. But, you know, besides that. So since reading them, I've been trying to pick up more. So I have On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Diamonds Are Forever. Goldfinger. Thunderball, For Your Eyes Only, and finally The Spy Who Loved Me. I'm trying to read these in order of the way that they came out as the publication order, but it's really hard to try and find them. If you're still here with me watching this, congratulations, you made it to the bottom shelves. So these again are probably of the worst order, they're just books that I don't particularly look at very often. I have Flowers in the Attic by Virginia Andrews. I don't know why I've still kept this, but I really enjoyed this. I read the entire series. I don't know why I just kept book one and took the others out. They're very old editions, so they were only good enough for the bin. But I just couldn't part with this one because I really enjoyed it. 
I hated the plot. I hated the the plot broke my heart. But I think because this caused such an emotional reaction to me is what made me like it so much as a novel. Please don't read this if you're under the age of 18 because it is just so, so sad. In fact, it is about a mother and her children who have to move in with another family member. However, the other family member doesn't like the children, so decides that they must live in the attic. And, the, and there is two children and two babies who are forced to live in the attic and it's about their lives growing up in solitary confinement together. They Came to Baghdad by Agatha Christie. This is the only Agatha Christie novel that I actually own, but I'm trying to get more of them. I saved this from the bin because my grandma went to throw this out. This is a 1951 copy, so it's very, very flimsy and it's very dirty, but I do want to read it before I let it go the journey because, you know, it deserves one more read. If anyone has a recommended order of reading for Agatha Christie novels, please let me know in the comments. Next, I have some Sarah Waters novels. I've read quite a lot of Sarah Waters because I love reading books that are female-female relationships because there's not many of them at all, but they're very hard to find. So let me know if you've got some other recommendations for female-female romances. So I have The Paying Guest and The Night Watch. I believe these are the only two books by her that I haven't read, but I don't tend to keep them because they aren't books that I would generally reread. They're not that great, if I'm honest. None of them have been, like, very memorable. The rest of the shelf is primarily Tudor England historical fiction. I am a little bit of a sucker for Tudor history. It's what I did my degree on, so I like to read books set in that time. So I have Dangerous, A Dangerous Inheritance by Alison Weir, The White Queen by Philippa Gregory, The Berlin Inheritance by Philippa Gregory, The King's Curse by Philippa Gregory, Wolf Hall and Bring Up the Bodies, which are by Hilary Mantle. They are part of a series about Thomas Cromwell. Next, I have the Dissolution series by C.J. Sansom. I think they are also known as the Shard Lake series. I have book one, and either this one and this one is book two and book three. I think there's about six or seven of them now, but they are Tudor crime novels, which sound awesome. And I'm probably gonna get around to reading them very soon. The King's Maker's Daughter by Philippa Gregory, which isn't actually Tudor England, it's 15th century, so it's a couple hundred years before the Tudors. The White Princess by Philippa Gregory, and finally The Red Queen. This is the most randomest shelf of all of my bookcases. Everything just goes here. I have Becoming by The Queen. Les Mis. I've seen the movie, I wasn't I didn't really enjoy it, but I did like the plot. I just didn't really like it as a musical. So I'm hoping that as a book, this will be great. SPQR, which is a non-fiction by Mary Beard, who is a famous historian, and it is about ancient Rome. The Suspect, which is a crime novel by Fiona Barton. I have read this. It was okay. It was like a three-star read. I'm just waiting until bookshops reopen so I can get this swapped again. It's a crime novel about 18, two 18-year-old girls who go to Thailand and end up being killed and about who killed them. Although I did think that the concept of using um, backpackers was interesting because it is a real threat that not a lot of people consider when they're thinking of fiction. Book One in the Black Magician Trilogy by Trudy Caravan. I know she's a popular fantasy author. I don't know how this book came in my possession, if I'm honest. The blurb gives me kind of Skyrim vibes, so hell yeah. Probably the most famous epic novel in classics, Warm Peace. Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I would probably go as far as to say this is a modern classic. The Tudors by Richard Rex, which is a non-fiction, but it's very, very good if you just want a brief history of the Tudors. The Man in the High Castle by Philip K. Dick. Again, is this a modern classic? It seems like it. It's sort of a reimagining of the outcome of World War II. When I read Dominion, which had a very similar plotline, I didn't like it, so I'm hoping that this one fares a little better. Schindler's Ark, but we know we're just gonna quickly hide that away because we don't want sad right now. The Discovery of France, which is a non-fiction book about the history of France. A History of the World and 100 Objects, which would make a fantastic birthday or Christmas present for anyone that loves history. The curator of the British Museum, Neil McGregor, he earmarked 100 objects in the museum's collection, which he thought marked significant turning points in, in, in human's history. So the objects are ordered chronologically, so you're reading sort of like human's history from the start up until like the very earliest, so like the credit card and how the credit card changed our lives every day. But most of it comes from prehistory, so it's very, very entertaining um, and it's just like, like the invention of guns and how that changed our history forever. It's just 
interesting and I think anyone that loves history would think this was a great book as well. One Summer America 1927 by Bill Bryson. This is a non-fiction book looking at a snapshot of America in 1927 which was a very pivotal point for American culture so I'm looking forward to getting around to reading this as someone that loves history and it makes absolutely no sense as to why this is on the bomb shelf either. It's a discovery of witches by Deborah Harkness. The blurb says it's a story of witches, demons and vampires. I've never read it but it sounds okay, I guess. And the final non-fiction book, The Road to Jonestown, Jim Jones and the People's Temple. I'm looking forward to reading this because I'm very interested in crime and cults. Obviously what happened was so, so sad, but also very unique as well. And I'm looking forward to reading sort of accounts of people that were actually in Jonestown to see what led up to the events of you know, the ending of Jonestown. And here it is, my final shelf. Essentially, this is my Robin Hobb and Brenda Sanderson shelf. So I have the Mistborn series here. This is just boxed as the trilogy, but then more books came out. So I have them there. I have started reading The Final Empire, which is book one. I started reading it many years ago, actually, but I stopped reading it about a third of the way in and I just couldn't pick it back up after that. And it just got put to one side, never to be read again. So and maybe one day I'll pick it back up but at the time it just wasn't for me because it was very high fantasy, very much about magic and it was just, I needed at the time a light read but I just never picked it back up. And I also just have a mismatch here of different Robin Hobb series. I have The Ship of Magic which I read and I got halfway into and I didn't particularly like it. Fool's Assassin which is book one of The Fits and the Fool. I've never read this but I know that this is better than Ship of Magic so I'm going to give this a go. Assassin's Apprentice which is book one in the Farseer trilogy. So I have plenty of unread Robin Hobb books here to try from different series to see if I can actually find one that I do enjoy because Robin Hobb writes great, I just didn't like the plot of Ship of Magic. And last I have a collection of short stories here called Dark Alchemy by different authors by Garth Nix, um, Neil Gaiman etc which are all stories about dark magic. So maybe I might pick this up when I'm just looking for something light to read because I think there's a collection of about 10 short stories here so oh, actually there's 15 so each story mustn't be very long so that might be interesting to get me through a reading slump. <sighs> and that's it! That's all the books. We did it. So thank you for spending time with me in my books. I think by doing this video I've realised that I have so much reading to do. I have a lot of books which I need to get rid of because it's there's just no point in keeping books that I don't want to read. But thank you for watching. Good night if you're asleep and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.